Here we are today at Wessels Farm in Otisville, New York. Uh, probably one of the largest producers of plugs and finished product here in the Northeast. We came down today not only to check out their greenhouse operation, but a new state-of-the-art wood chipping and uh, wood furnace operation now that is heating approximately five acres of greenhouse with basically renewable fuel as opposed to fossil fuels, um, such as a lot of the greenhouses um, that use oil, coal, or natural gas. Uh, Wessels Farm now is being heated by um, basically wood chips, which is a renewable resource. So we're gonna go check out their operation today. And this is actually the building we're in. And you can see now, what, what year was that? Pick this, this, this is about 1977, give or take. So, in 77, you were still a chicken farm at that time, still right? Still had chickens, still actively had chickens. And uh, the greenhouses originally here, there was a large garden, and then there was two greenhouses. One went this way, one went this way, made out of two by fours with plastic covering. And on Christmas Eve 1979, the poly came off and froze everything that was in the main greenhouse. So, we went out and bought bought our first commercial greenhouse at that point. And uh, this is A building, C building is setting here. This is E, and E is actually over here in this corner, which is this building here. Now at one point, this is one of the largest poultry farms in Orange County, and one of the cool things about this building, as it was built, was this was on all the Cornell tours because it was the first chicken house that had forced ventilation with fans. It was like state of the art. And what year was that? That was um, probably in the early 60s. In the early 60s. All live, all non cage chickens running all over the place. You get a big thunderstorm, we'd have to come over because all the chickens would hurt up in a corner, so you'd be in there literally chucking chickens, pulling them out of a corner mm -hmm. um, so they didn't smother themselves. Cause they're, they're not the smartest birds in the world. But anyway, as we move forward, you can see this is still the original. We've expanded this. There's about 38,000 square feet of greenhouse space on this side. Now this picture here, when was this picture this taken? This is about 91. Okay, and you've done a lot of growing since then. Right, you can see that C, C, C building is gone. D building has been reduced just to this little tiny piece. And uh, at that point there were, there were better connect, uh, Quonset houses all built over here. And consequently now, this is all of gone. And this row here is gone, and this is all better connect right now. But the reason I wanted to show you this picture is because just recently we have purchased this farm, this this complex here, and we come from like over here all the way back down. And it actually gives us frontage now on two roads in a big L shape. Um, so any plans for moving the office now? No, not not right at the moment. We have very low ceilings. This was built during the. Uh, last big energy crisis right. so the whole industry said bring your houses down try and make them tight control control your environment control your heat and you'll be you'll be better off now do you you ventilate this as well yeah this actually uh, this side of the greenhouse range actually is forced ventilation with with fans um, the other side of the range is completely natural ventilation there's, there's no fans other than the hid fans that just break up the air stratus okay this has a um, biotherm uh, heating system, all the little rubber tubes that you see running through the benches, mm -hmm. and uh, this is one of the first installations in the Northeast when the president and the company still came out and showed you how to do it. Really? Yep. Kind of like Henry Ford trying to sell his first car. <laughs> but uh, what we're doing here is this, we do all of our rooting in here. Um, everything that's brought into the farm comes to this side of the farm because of insect and disease, because we get stuff from all over the country, all over the world. Um, cuttings come from Uganda, they come from China, they come from Guatemala, they come from Mexico. So we try and isolate everything to this side of the farm and our seed production stays on the other side. With all the cutting material and if we have to buy plugs from an outside supplier, all that material comes to this side before it's put in production. So it can get sprayed and monitored. Uh, we do use an integrated pest management system, so we spray very little. Uh, that's the object of the little yellow card over there. We actually are monitoring, we actually have an outside firm that comes in and actually monitors the insect levels. So we know how the population is growing 
and we'll spray at the peak and we'll knock it back down. So we're not just in here spraying every seven days just because. Right. You know, so we control it, and it's very expensive to do, so it's a lot easier to monitor. Look, Angie, flowers. Not the industry. <laughs> flowers. Those are Bogan Villas, actually. That's an old product that we're trying again. This thing is done on a timer, and there's also, there should be, uh, when necessary, we can put it on a manual valve that actually measures the amount of water, and it works by weight, and shuts the system on and off. Um, because um, it works, uh, depending on the humidity and amount of air, that's moving through the greenhouse. And this, this, is, this is a brand new system. And all these guys come in from cuttings, huh? All of this material comes from cuttings. Right now, we're buying... Predominantly what we're doing is we're buying a callus cutting, it's not even rooted, it comes, just comes in a box and we stick and root them, um, only because of the freight issues predominantly. Right. Yeah. Uh, we were getting to the point where we were paying uh, $55,000 to $58,000 a year just in freight to get the cutting material here. So now by getting it in a little box, we've cut that down to I think it's like $16,000 a year in freight to get all the cutting material. That's actually what grabs the seed, and as the drum rotates, it puts the seed in the tray. What we're trying to do is see the tray itself, the little index. Yep. We're trying to get to make sure that the seed falls right in that little index. So we get a, a uniform placement and a uniform growth. Everything is dribbled now. Nothing is spray because the spray actually can move the seed around. So now everything just flows across and it actually just puts a, a string of water quite literally. Someone? Oh, we We work with three trot, three sizes. You've got a 144 right there. This is a 288, and then you've got your 512. Seed germination room. Really? As you can see, everything is stacked crisscross, so there's no compaction within the cells. That's why all the trays are crisscross, and it also allows for humidity to saturate each each one of the trays. Basically, just a hot water system. There's hot water coming off the boiler, running through the trough. We create what they call wet steam. And that's and, uh, but yeah, we can see it on the camera here because you can, you we're can all fogged up. You see it on the up. camera, you can <laughs> see it on the roof, but notice the floor is fairly dry. So, so now this. how long do they it all stay depends, in this It room? all depends on the varietal um, characteristics of the, of the seed. Some material is here for probably one or two days. Some material can be here for three or four days. Like if you've got the stuff in the clay, you want to make sure that you're, you push that moisture in there and break, start to break the clay down. Um, Basically, it's a very primitive form of seed hydration. What we're trying to do is get as much moisture and humidity into those seeds as they all germ at the same time. Even though the seed packages will say that it has an 84% germination rate, right. that means that it will, it will germinate at 84% over a period of seven to 10 days. We want it to germinate in a period of two to three days. Right, so you're cutting it So we're just third. pushing it along. You're trying to cut it down to third. Yeah, we're trying to push it along. It's kind of like what we did with the morning glory seeds. Soaked them in water for 24 yeah. hours before we planted them. Now, if they, like, when we do geraniums, the seed company will actually crumble wow. them and scarify the seed. So it'll start to germinate. You could, you could actually see the steam evaporate off of the camera the moment we walked out the door. Yeah. The difference in humidity. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. So that's a good <laughs> Yep. Okay, Don, hold Angie back. <laughs> 